Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Glee Books. My name's James Ross, and as always, it is a pleasure to be talking to you from the uh, Howard Halls of the actual shop of Glee Books, although we are, of course, online this evening. It's also a pleasure to be here on behalf of Ventura Press, who have published Betty's book this evening. Betty is, of course, the, the author of this wonderful book, The Other Side of Absence, and I imagine a good friend to you all. The first time I met my father, I was 19. Now, that is a book. That is the start of a wonderful book. It's just the most extraordinary story, so I was captivated from that moment. And it's a story of a very strong woman, not only Nora, Betty's mother, who brought Betty to Australia when she was very young, six months old, but it's Betty who survived this story. 70 years after my father's arrest by the Gestapo for his part in World War II Polish resistance, in a city where I didn't speak the language or know anyone, I was looking for the truth about my dead father. With a large bunch of keys in my hands, I worked my way through the five locks on the front door until finally I was able to push it open. I reached around the door jamb and fumbled for the light switch. Flick, 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 nothing. No lights, but the central heating was working and on that cold November day, it was warm inside, uncomfortably warm. I left the front door open to let in some light, but even so, being in that forsaken apartment in Poland made me uneasy. We're all here to um, congratulate Betty on her fantastic work. Family histories are micro histories. They are little contained histories that tell us things and open up a world that is not contained in the official histories. And that's why doing a memoir and, and looking into your past or your family's past is really, really valuable. Long buried questions wormed their way to the surface. Who was this Polish man who was my father? Antony Jagilski, or Tony as my mother Nora always called him. He wasn't Jewish, so why had he been sent to Auschwitz? How had he survived? Why did he come to Australia? And most of all, why did he desert us, turn up briefly when I was 19, and then disappear again? I did come to an understanding of what had led him to make the decisions that he made, and I have some compassion for that, and I certainly understand now the damage that war can do, not only to the individuals who we send to war, but also to the families that they return to. We can't expect them to come back. You know, we've asked them to do things that in any normal society they'd be in prison for life for doing, and yet we ask them to do these things in war. Can I congratulate you on this book? May it fly out into the world and off the bookshelves. I think it's the book that is uh, important for these days. It's a book that talks about resilience. It's a book that talks about difficult times and managing through them. 